high salaries, the prestige, the career opportunities. These are just some of the perks that come with being a data analyst. But what about the gritty reality behind the scenes? What if I told you you'd spend more time looking at spreadsheets, drowning in volumes of bad data that you won't even be able to enjoy any of the perks of your job. Today, I'm gonna to peel back the curtain and reveal some of the ugly truths about being a data analyst because it really isn't as glamorous as it may seem. Okay, listen, I'm not here to turn anyone away from being a data analyst. I've been a data analyst for two years now, but there are some parts of the job that really make me question whether it was the right choice. And let me explain why. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. So first things first, the data as a data analyst you'll be dealing with so much data to the point where i almost wish my monitors were bigger but often it's not actually the volume of data that's the issue it's the quality of that data databases get information so wrong and so often that i find it absurd that they can come to us with a product with so many discrepancies and try to sell it to us. How am I as an analyst supposed to trust the information from your database if it isn't correct? How am I supposed to present clients with data or recommendations that can have serious financial implications on them based on the data from your database if it's wrong? A client could lose millions and millions of dollars with the wrong info. Now, as an example, Let's say a client wants to see whether they should invest in a company and they want to see a share price forecast for a company. Now, that's not how it usually works. They, they'll look at other parameters, but for the purposes of this example, let's say they want to see a share price forecast for a company. So I would need historical share price data to create that forecast. So I'll run through all the databases and run a search for the share price over a specified time period. Now, what can happen is that the share price for the same company for the same period of time can be completely different in database A versus database B. So now what I have to do is go and manually find the source of the data and figure out which database is correct. The way that databases get this kind of information is they write an algorithm that scours a company's annual report filing. For something like share price, they'll probably pull the data from something like Bloomberg or Thomson Reuters, but man, these algorithms are so hit and miss. And more often than not, what's even more annoying is that since you have to maintain the deadline of the project, you can't wait for the database to update the incorrect information, you're just left with a raised ticket and you have to find an alternative way of completing the work. So the brunt of the problem just ends up falling on you and you have to end up doing countless hours of manual data validation. If a database comes to us and says, oh look, we're expanding to include this information and this information, we'll be covering this information now. We always take a step back and say, now we're gonna have to test the database even further because the sheer volumes of data that they'll be adding and processing and presenting to us increases the risk of incorrect information slipping through. As databases continue to expand in their size and complexity, the likelihood of encountering errors or discrepancies increases exponentially. Now, if you're wondering if these databases are so bad, why do we use them in the first place? It's because different databases specialize in different areas of information. Some databases specialize in audit information, some financial information, others actuarial information and etc. And the nature of the work that I do means I need access to information that covers the entire scope. Another issue with the quality of data that I have to deal with or data analysts have to deal with is that if we're working with data that was manually inputted by someone else, then they'll we'll have to check for errors there too. There probably will be errors actually. Now, admittedly, the likelihood of manual errors is decreasing as people start to use more automated processes, but they are still there. You'll find that manual errors tend to happen in longer strings of numbers or even more commonly in names and addresses. If let's say the senior actuary of a company was David Forrest, but someone had written David Forrester, that's a completely different person. And forget about it, if you flag the error to the owner of the data, it'll take them an entire year to fix that data in their restated filing. All in all, if you present a piece of work with a discrepancy that was due to database error, that ultimately falls on you. It's almost a case of undue responsibility. And I've done internships at banks where we didn't really have to worry about the data validation or processing side of things because we were given those by the middle office. So. You could say it's part of the job. But it's still very annoying though. Now, one of the most annoying parts of the job is quality assurance. And I don't even really know about the scale to which quality assurance was part of daily workflow until I actually got the job. Now, of course, look, I know you have to check your work, double check your work before giving it to a client to make sure everything's correct. I'm not going to give a client an incorrect piece of work. But I've spoken to data analysts in other companies as well. And it seems that a lot of companies have really rigorous 
quality assurance protocols and pipelines in place. You complete a piece of work, it has to go through an entire pipeline of checks. They'll check everything, whether the grammar is correct, whether the formatting is correct, whether the correct font was used throughout, whether everything is aligned to the left, whether it's aligned to the right, everything. Then there's a whole spreadsheet that the assurer has to complete, which checks the source of your data, checks the validity of your data, whether your results can be replicated, whether you chose the right databases, whether you chose the right method. And then it goes through an approval stage where the managing directors have to approve the work before you can send it off to the client. So essentially when a client gives you a piece of work or gives you the deadline for their piece of work, you, you essentially have to factor in a good week or two just for quality assurance. And quality assurance can get repetitive and dare I say boring. You're basically checking other people's work. So depending on the scale of the request, you'll have to have a, a kickoff meeting with them. You'll have to understand the entire request from top to bottom and then go and check all their work. Admittedly, it's something that bothers me more because I wasn't privy to it beforehand. It's still quite a tedious process. It is something that you have to do almost every day. You can't quality assure your own piece of work. Someone else has to do it. So you often end up being the other analyst that has to quality assure the piece of work. And that again cuts into more time. And finally, number three, the learning never stops, at least for me. Now, I have to preface this by saying, learning something new every day isn't necessarily a bad thing. Learning is good. I mean more in the sense where a client will want such a specific request that you'll have to go and learn an entirely new piece of software or a new tool just to get that one piece of work done. This happens increasingly more where a client is currently using older software. If they're using an older piece of software or an older tool, I will make the recommendation that we use this software, we use this tool, we use this program. Why don't you think about perhaps implementing it? But if they don't have the infrastructure to be able to implement that, then I'll have to go and learn everything about the tool, the program, the software, so I can present their findings to them in a way that they'll understand. It's almost an exercise in futility. I know the program's obsolete. That program is not going to be used in the future. The skill I'm learning right now is just for this one-off request, which isn't helpful. It does not help career progression. It does not help learning something new. Once I've learned it, I'll just have to archive all of that knowledge in the back of my head and move on to the next project. And being a data analyst in the midst of all this technology, at the cutting edge of all this technology, I mean, forget about it. Every day there's a new tool, new piece of software, a new program you'll have to learn, which going back on my previous point, is great for progression and learning opportunities, but that doesn't mean you spend a lot of time a lot of time in front of a screen. There's long hours spent working independently, poring over data sets and coding scripts and learning something new, which is a lot to balance. And it gets exhausting, well, it can get exhausting very, very quickly. I also don't like when clients will give you a piece of work that number one, doesn't actually answer what they're looking for. Or number two, they'll just come to you with a piece of work that's damn near impossible to complete, but client expectations are really hard to manage. Now, I can just say right at the beginning, that won't be possible. With the resources we have, the time I'll be able to allot to this with my other responsibilities, I'll be able to get this much done in the next few months. Okay, that's it. That's enough for this video. That was definitely a bit of a rant. I hope this video was useful. If it was useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.